what is up guys welcome back to another video uh if you remember on the the last video we were able to get our 2006 suzuki forensic started and uh we also uh the check engine light came on but at the end of the video i found that it was one of these sensors other than that the driver's side window won't roll up and uh the passenger rear uh brake caliper is seized up that's what's going on with it now but you guys as much as you know i love 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 working on this thing uh we're not going to be working on this thing today we're going to take some time off of it and um we're going to be working on the ford. now i've looked online just to see if there's uh, many videos on the 2013 ford fusion but there's not a whole lot out there about it but today we're going to be replacing the fuel pump so uh just uh keep watching and uh, we'll figure this out together all right guys so on the videos that i've seen on the internet on youtube um you're able to access the fuel pump from underneath the seat here and to lift uh up this seat there's just these little clips right here there's one here there's one on the other side in the same spot and you just pull the little tab and lift it up but as you can see here there is no access panel here anywhere in the videos that I've seen, it has like a access panel in this area here, but there is none. So, as I was saying, you guys, this is a 2013 Ford Fusion. As you can see, I've already got it up here on the ramps. This car would not move on its own power for very much. So I was able to jack it up and put it on there safely. And you can't forget, I put some nice uh, chopped up logs for our cho wheel chocks up here in the front. And uh, we already disconnected our battery. And now um, now that we have all that done, this is uh, secured. Uh, we can go down there and I can show you guys where to start taking this thing apart. All right, so first off, this is the back side of the car. Um, I got my jack down here already. You can see it over there with a piece of wood so it doesn't puncture anything in the tank. Uh, I got it set somewhat in the middle so the tank doesn't like fall over or anything. Uh, I put it up there snug before loosening anything, just uh, for safety precautions. And the tank does go from one side to the other. It does have the bigger, uh, beefier part of it on this side, but it does have a slimmer portion of it right here. I don't know if you can see that. I put this down there just to help once I bring it down. All right, guys, so we are now on the driver's side. Uh, as you can see, I've already got this thing uh, halfway down. Uh, but the first thing I did was uh, loosen this hose clamp bolt right here and pull this off of the tank. This is the uh, filler neck right here. And uh, I just put a bag in here in, in case some fuel came, uh, so fuel wouldn't come out. Uh, a little bit came out but not that much but i still put it in there so we don't bathe in some fuel today now um i don't know if you guys can see very well down here but there's two fuel straps uh there's one on the driver's side and there's two 13 millimeter bolts uh one up here one on the back side and then the the other strap i'll show you here in a second on the passenger side Alright, so we are now on the passenger side, right in front of the wheel, the rear wheel. And you can see that our strap is right here. There's a bolt right there. Like I said, they're 13 millimeter. And you follow that to the end over there on the back side of that is another 13 millimeter bolt. So far, that's what's holding this up. And as you can see, I've already got that side off. I gotta finish taking these off. And then we can bring this down. All right, so now that we have those off, we're gonna bring this down slowly. Oh, oh, slower than that, Jesus. As you can see, the exhaust is in the middle of it. We gotta like leap it over that. 
But uh, we're gonna go look, see if we can see the hoses and lines that are hooked up to the pump on the top. Uh, you can see them up here. Um, I'm not sure what that line is for over there. I'm gonna go check out that side, and make sure it's uh, not gonna get caught and ripped. And uh, we'll lower this a little more so we can have a little more access. All right, so now we're just gonna disconnect all these lines. It looks like this one right here. Uh, just pulls up out of here so it's not caught in there. Maybe. Yep, just pulls up off of there. And then we got a, our other lines up here and connectors. So we just gotta unplug all of these and then we can pull this thing out of here. All right, guys. So we fished the fuel tank out as you can see. But I'll show you guys real quick. The easiest to deal with. Uh, this one was the worst one it's it has this cover on th the top here that goes around this i don't know if it's to like secure the cord or what the the wire or what but this clips onto the top of this so first off you have to pry all three sides of this to get it off and then um I figured out you gotta push both sides of these in and then pull up on it for it to come out. And then this one, the bigger one, this is the one that was caught uh, in the tank and I was making sure it wasn't gonna break or anything. I would be very careful with these, uh, including that one. Uh, they break pretty easily, so be careful with those. But uh, this connector right here, you really just slide a screwdriver in here and pry it open. Uh, just be careful with it so you don't break it. And this one is the same as that one. You just stick a screwdriver in here and pry it open. This one I was having a very hard time with. I don't know if it's because it had a bunch of gunk up in there. So I had to get the small screwdriver in there and really be easy on it and pry on it. But uh, I was able to get those off. Uh, just be very careful, you guys. It wasn't very hard getting it, you know, to jump that exhaust coming this way. Uh, the only thing that made it hard for me was the fact that the tank has like almost half a tank full of gas. So um, yeah, it just basically slid this way and it came right out. I just made sure to lift the jack up a little bit so it didn't complete and leave the that piece of wood on there so it didn't completely just fall and flop on the ground maybe even break because uh, uh, we don't know how uh, th this plastic shouldn't be uh, that brittle but you never know um, crazy things happen uh, just make sure you don't let it just drop on the ground uh, just you know to be safe now i'm gonna clean uh, all this stuff off of the outside of where the fuel pump is so we don't get it into our fuel tank and then we get our screwdriver and slide this over so we can get it into these slots so we can pull it off of there as you can see i got the fuel pump out basically it's held down by this you just uh, get a screwdriver and kind of chisel it and hit it to where the these notches the bigger ends of it so they can slide out of here I don't know if I did a very good <laughs> thing explaining that, but uh, I used the vacuum here to get most of the the dirt that, that was really like all crumbled up and uh, going everywhere. I used it to vacuum it up. And then once you get this off of there, this pretty much just pops out. Um, but yeah, just be careful not to get any of that. Like I said, the uh, crumbled up dirt in there and you're, you don't want that in your gas. This is your fuel pump right here. I'm just uh, letting the extra the excess gas that's in here and right now. Alright guys, I already went in and washed my hands as best as I could. Here is our new pump. Here is our old one. There, same thing. I did take the uh, fuel level thing uh, off of the old one because this clip right here, the black one, the one that came with this new one, didn't seem to hold as well as the one there did so i swapped them out um this right here whenever i would like slightly move the fuel lever thing it would like slip off of there 
so then I put this one on there and I don't have that problem it just stays in place so just like a peace of mind kind of thing so then I don't have to worry about later on like hey my fuel gauge doesn't work well I have a feeling this would have probably came off now we can insert that one back in here um, very carefully not to get anything in there probably should have went ahead and got this o-ring uh, i didn't think about it i thought maybe the pump would come with it but it looks pretty good i mean i don't see any cracks or anything in it so we should be okay you can see why we were having problems with this thing uh, there's these clips on here you just you know pull on them and they unclip off of there and then you can pull this pump up but you can see that filter in there. Look how dirty that thing is. It's completely black. Uh, the one on the new one's nice and clean. Uh, this one's got a bunch of buildup in it, as you can see. The car does have 226,000 miles on it, so um, it's not surprising. But there you have it. That thing was clogged up. Gross. Gross. All right, so we got our fuel tank back up there situated. Got the filler neck hooked back up, all the lines hooked back up. Everything tightened up. So now what we gotta do is uh, hook the battery back up. All right, guys, moment of truth here. Get this baby going. Six, two, four, seven. There you go guys that's how you uh, replace a fuel pump in a 2013 uh, 1.6 liter ford fusion eco boost uh, 2013 i don't know if i mentioned that already but that's how you do that hopefully you guys uh, were able to get it done with the instruction that i gave other than that guys uh, make sure you uh, check out my other video subscribe if you haven't we got some more stuff uh, coming uh, pretty soon uh, the truck over there should be getting some stuff done to it. Uh, you can check out my previous videos on that one as well uh, on how it got to where it is right now. But uh, other than that, guys, make sure you hit that like button because it lets YouTube know that more people should uh, check out my videos and I'm doing a good job. And uh, yeah, I'll check you guys in the next one. Peace.